Hey gang, welcome back. Okay, so this video actually kicks off a brand new series. A series that, and up until now, is going to be something completely different than everything we've been talking about in OCHEM 1, and for that matter, OCHEM 2. So this series is all about NMR, and specifically, we're going to focus on uh, proton NMR, or HNMR, as you'll see it written. Most people may even just call it NMR. Uh, there's different types. So I'm not going to lie to you guys. Whenever I learned this topic at first, I wasn't totally crazy about it. However, this is one of the most powerful ideas, um, areas in OCHEM, and to be honest, real-life organic chemists use NMR almost every single day. It is hugely important. So I just want this video to be an intro topic because whenever I was taking uh, OCHEM 1 uh, at Pitt myself, I'll be honest, I didn't really understand it the first time through. I didn't really understand the underlying principles, and I'm not going to go so in-depth, but we're going to kind of give a general enough overview that you understand what is going on behind the scenes when we, we actually get to solving NMR problems. Because, believe it or not, you don't really have to understand any of this stuff to actually do the problems, but that's never how we should approach anything. We should always have a general understanding of what is going on. Okay, so this is more real life. So, in, in real life, if you're ever going to be doing undergraduate research or, you know, functioning in any type of organic chemistry lab, you're obviously going to be doing reactions and maybe multiple steps to where you get to a point where you want to stop, take whatever physical sample you have, whether it's a liquid or whether it's a solid, and you actually want to determine what structure you have. Did your reaction actually work? Because, you know, life isn't perfect, things may go wrong, you know, humans make mistakes, and to be honest, sometimes reactions don't work at all. Um, so you want to actually stop, take your current, you know, sample or whatever, you know, physical thing you have and figure out what structure am I working with here? Did I actually make the transformation occur that I want? NMR is the tool we use to do that. So here's just a happy little camper right here. He's an organic chemist. He's having fun. But let's just say he finished, you know, a reaction sequence or maybe just one reaction and he wants to NMR his current sample. He wants to make sure, hey, I want to see what you know my structure looks like of my physical sample so I can actually figure out my, what I did actually worked. So he has a little test tube that's a liquid uh, that you dissolve with a known solvent. Usually it's um, this solvent right here. So he has a sample. What he's going to do in his chemistry building is he's going to go to wherever the NMR machines are. They're actually pretty big. Uh, I had to do this a couple times. I actually got, was fortunate enough to be able to do. Uh, a couple of NMR, running a couple of NMR samples. You actually go to a machine that looks like this. It almost looks like a big cylinder. And if you're short like me, or if the machine's really big, there's usually a fun little ladder for our short folk. He'll go up here. He'll have drop his little uh, specialized test tube in one of these little holes. The uh, the NMR unit will centrifuge it. Will spin it around. And this is where the theory begins. So that's just um, and then. What will happen at the end is that you'll go on a computer, there will be a file with your results. It'll have a spectra, a spectrum rather, I and mean, you'll get comfortable with those. You print it out and then you can actually do some analysis by hand. Okay, so what happens inside the machine? So it's important to know that we can assume, you know, hydrogens, right? We know them, and this marker is not very good. We know them to be, you know, one electron, one proton, one neutron. So this is proton NMR. So we are just looking at um, analysis that's going to focus on H+, which is really just a proton, right? So what we can assume protons to be, and this is a little bit of physics knowledge, so if you don't, haven't had physics before, just bear with me, as a little, um, the, the, the proton lives in the nucleus. Sorry about that. And nuclei themselves can be treated as tiny little bar magnets. Um, because nuclei, nuclei spin about an axis. They're just const, constantly, constantly rotating about an axis. So when you have a charge that's spinning like this, it generates its own magnetic field. So this is just a single proton that's inside this nucleus. What you'll see is that you have these magnetic field lines going like this. This is, would be the North Pole. And these loop all the way around like this, this is the South Pole. 
Now, this is not this is the bit of physics that's a little bit crazy to understand, but just know nuclei spin, hydrogen nuclei spin, there's one proton. Because of that, they generate their own magnetic field. So they look like tiny little bar magnets. Um, and I'm going to designate them by this, looking like this. So because the North Pole is going this way, I'll draw a little bar. This is uh, this magnet would be facing this way. The North Pole is going up. Okay. So inside this machine, what happens is the machine generates its own magnetic field, its own external magnetic field, where in lecture your teacher will probably use an H naught, an H sub zero. Here's why the machine does that. What will happen is, whatever your structure looks like, wherever they're all hydrogens, right, aka hydrogen nuclei, they will be spinning a certain way. Sometimes you have a hydrogen nuclei looking like this, or maybe like this, or maybe it's facing down, downward this way. And maybe it's known, you know, like when your external field is applied, your external field is going to go a certain way. Let's just say it's going straight up this way. So, what will happen here is one of two things. This hydrogen nuclei is going in the direction of the magnetic field. So, this is going to gain energy and is going to be excited. It's going to gain an extra kind of spin where it will be designated by an alpha spin. So, this specific hydrogen nuclei, right? these, these are individual hydrogen nuclei, will get excited. It's going to gain energy. This uh, hydrogen nuclei is opposing the external field. It has a spin designated by beta, and these are the things you would find in the book. This just means, hey, this hydrogen nuclei was spinning in the direction of the field. This one, or its own field was spinning, or you know, facing in the direction of the external field. And this one, and I'm just going to erase this one, we're just going to use two, was opposing the external field. So basically, what happens is this hydrogen nuclei got excited. So it gains energy, it's in it, and it's in an excited state, and then it eventually gives off energy. So it's going to reach an excited state. So if I put this kind of like energy right here, energy right here, it gives off energy, and then it drops down to the beta state. So this one, this is a temporary thing, and then it will eventually go to the beta state. Eventually, the external field will give this uh, hydrogen nuclei enough energy to where it will actually gain enough energy to go to the alpha state, and then it will, you know, reach an excited state, then drop off and give off energy. So you have this constant equilibrium of, you know, nuclei opposing the field and getting enough energy to then get excited and give off energy, and then nuclei that are already excited and give off energy and then go to the beta state. So you have constant equilibrium of nuclei going alpha, beta, alpha, or beta, alpha, alpha, beta, beta, alpha. So it's a constant back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. In that type of resonance, which is what the R stands for, nuclear magnetic resonance, you know, you're going to establish something where um, on a spectrum, this energy will have a certain frequency that is continuously being given off. And that's where you see a line on a spectrum. So it all boils down to hydrogen nuclei have their own little magnetic fields. Sorry, own little magnetic fields. When you put your sample in the machine, the external field is applied to all of those hydrogen nuclei. They're either going to be in the same direction or opposite directions. Then you're going to have a constant excited, giving off energy, you know, then gaining of energy to then be excited, giving off energy. You're going to have that back and forth. The energy given off is seen as at a certain frequency, which the machine will then show you on a spectrum, which we will get to. Just wanted to give you the background because I know I used to hate seeing symbols like this, this, and this, because I never understood it. So in the next video, I want to tackle some terminology, and then eventually we'll get to some problem solving. See you in the next video.